Hey guys, RC here. Well, new save time. So we've ended our DeGroff shop climbing the ladder save, and we still have the journeyman going. And I had started the match of the day series and uh, just didn't seem to get any traction with that. I thought it would be a unique idea, and I think it still is, but I uh, got some feedback some, from a friend of mine that I really value his opinion, and he's one of my subscribers here as well. And he said that was not going to be a good idea. There was really nothing for a viewer to sink their teeth into on that one, I guess, that there was no no way to really get to know individual players. So we're going to go ahead and scrap that one as well, and we're going to come back with another single team save here. What I have done is I've taken the DeGroff Shop save. So we are in, I don't know, 2067 or something like that. So we're, we're a good ways down the road. So it's continuing that save from where we left off with the five-year look back. And what I have done is I've gone through the five major nations, France, Spain, Italy, England, and Germany. and um, I've looked through all of their uh, divisions, all their second, third, fourth tiers, uh, all the way down. And there was one club in particular I was looking for. Unfortunately, since the save had ended and we had gone the five years, they had fallen out of the playable levels in Germany. Uh, and then uh, so I, I was looking for another club and I came across one. And they're newly promoted. They are odds-on favorites to be re relegated right back down to a non-playable league. So they are in one of the uh, conference uh, lower conferences in England. And so what we're going to do in this save is it's going to be it's going to be a modified youth academy challenge and a director of football challenge. I'm going to turn on the director of football to make all of the signing decisions, I will retain right of refusal. So I'll make the final decision whether to accept a player or not. Uh, I will probably be more involved in scouting here, which I'm going to have to read up on because usually I just let my scouts handle all that. But because we're doing kind of a youth academy, I want to be a little more involved to streamline what exactly we're looking for in the scouting process. Now, I'm not going to do a full-blown youth academy where I can only utilize our youth intake. Not going to do that because we're starting mid mid uh, season here in the lifespan of FM21. So, we kind of need to ramp that up a little bit and I I don't think I would enjoy that personally. So I'm going to modify it where we can sign players, but they're going to have to be under the age of 21. And I do not exploit, and I don't even know how to say it, but you know how you can go in on regen day or new gen day and you can poach all the, all the best players. I'm not going to do that. Uh, we're going to actually have to go out and buy players if we're going to do that. Uh, so it will rely mostly on our youth intake and then whatever players that we can buy. Now, I'm going to throw a caveat in there. And, and the name of the series, let's start there, is Play the Kids. So my goal is to bring young players up from our youth academy into the first team and build that way. But if we come across a position, let's say, let's say I don't have a left back uh, in my youth academy, uh, or in my youth squad, then I can go out and I can sign somebody. Now, again, because we're starting at a low level, we're not going to get great players until higher levels. But even at the higher levels, we're going to want to go out and sign players for our academy squad, develop them as best we can, whether that's in-house or sending them out on loan, and then bringing them into the first team when when they're ready, or maybe even before they're really ready. Uh, but to build around the, the youth that we have rather than continuing to loan out and bringing in new players. Uh, so that'll be a different challenge for me because I'm used to building. Uh, I like playing youth players and I like building, you know, recruiting, you know, and signing and 
buying youth players, but usually I'm buying, you know, 21, 22, 23 year olds to step into the first team that are first team ready, you know, four or five star potential. Uh, so, you know, this is going to put a little bit of a different tweak on that. And the goal will be to stay with this one club for the duration of the save. And this should be the final save of FM21 for me. Uh, we still have the journeyman going on. I don't know how long that will last. Uh, but this would probably be, you know, if I do end that one, which I don't think I will. I will keep that one going. So three days a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday for this save. Uh, coming out at 8 a.m. Central Time in the, in the States. And I believe that is two in the afternoon in London, London time. So uh, that's, the, that's the save idea for what it's worth. So let's take a look at where we are going to be. Well, we have been hired by Tiverton Town. So we'll get into the club in a minute, but don't forget, please hit the like button, especially here on the first episode. Uh, no matches today, just going to kind of go through the welcome introduction to the club. So hopefully this doesn't last a whole lot longer unless I ramble. But Tiverton Town starting their 150th season. And so we will be their new manager. I've signed a one-year deal for four and a half thousand per month, and I replace Laszlo Borsi. No fault of Laszlo's. So they play, uh, their facility is called Ladies Mead. That's got some connotation to it. Uh, but poor training, poor youth, and basic youth recruitment. So we've got a long way to go to build up our academy. And that means we will be sinking as much money as we can into developing uh, recruitment and training facilities, I think. One-star reputation. Uh, we already have a general manager. I, have not, I haven't looked at any of this. I, all I've done is I've gone through the standings, the tables, and looked at different clubs. So the big thing is currently they are semi-professional. Uh, in a league now that has quite a few professional sides. So that's going to make things challenging as well. Uh, they did win the Southern Premier Central last year. They are in the middle of a 56-year barren spell, not having won any competition since 2007. Keeping in mind, th this, this save started as a plus 30 where I simulate out 30, I vacation for 30 years uh, before I start. And then we've had the entire run with DeGroff Shop, the five-year uh, vacation to where we could do a five-year look back at DeGroff Shop. And that is where we are picking up here with the Tivies, which is their nickname. Uh, I do like the fact that they have uh, their yellow uh, home, home kits, white away kits. Uh, historically, of course, that ties in with Leeds United, uh, yellow and white uh, kits. And of course, I am a Leeds United fan, so I was very happy to see that. Uh, there's our best 11. Uh, unfortunately, we only have 10, so we'll have to sort that out. They want us to work within the payroll budget, fight bravely against relegation, be competitive in the, tr in the cups, and my contract expires at the end of the year. And their goal for the next five years is merely to remain in the Vonorama South. We'll sort all that off camera. I'll do that all off camera. And there we go. All right, so let's take a look at the competition. And then we will dive in. So here's our season preview. And you can see the five clubs that have come up. Eastley, uh, who are projected to do very well, a top half finish. Chesham. Cool East Thurrock and Tiverton in 24th position, and by a long shot, the odds on favorites to be relegated. If we take a look at them, and this is what got you know, this is what this is what I kind of look at when I pick a club. So, a uh, couple of rivals, no, no legends, one icon, one favored personnel, but that's because they've been relatively uh, not in the game. And if we look here at their history, so this only shows 
when they have been in a playable league. Now, I just made the league playable uh, at the end of the DeGroff Shop save, but they made it into the regionals, uh, the regional conference in 2053, so that was 10 years ago, and they finished 8th their first year, fell to 14th, and then were relegated in 2055-56. So that was eight years ago. So they had a three-year run in the conference level uh, before being relegated back into a non-playable division. Now, I could have gone and downloaded the 11-tier system, you know, but I wanted to kind of keep with what we already had. There will be some players that we know, potentially, potentially. And, uh, yeah, so this is where we're going to be playing at. Not the greatest facility. Uh, I think the name's cool, 3,500 seats, uh, 3,500 capacity, 520 seating capacity. It was built in 1946, and it's in average condition, uh, no undersoil heating. So we're probably, uh, as with most lower league uh, saves, a lot of uh, delays. In fact, I was looking at their Twitter account today, and of course their season has been called off due to COVID in real life. Uh, So I thought this would be kind of cool that maybe it gives their fans uh, something to follow for the club in the meantime. But again, we're going to build around youth. We will have the ability to go outside youth only if we don't have somebody that is qualified to play there. And let me know in, in the comments what you guys think. So let's say I have that left back we talked about earlier, but he's three-star potential, four-star potential, but he's only half-star or one-star developed. He's not really ready to play. Do we, have, or do we play him anyway? Do we force ourselves to play those players if we have somebody? Or if they could become a good player in another year or two, do we go ahead and allow us to buy somebody? I don't know the answer to that. Because he's not, re- we have him, but he's not really ready to play. And I already said that would give me the flexibility to go out and buy a player for a short duration. This also means we're going to have to be a selling club. Uh, we're going to have to probably sell our best players to generate money to buy more decent potential players uh, to build up that youth facility, also to raise revenue to where we can have the board do improvements to our infrastructure. Uh, And that's where we hopefully are going to spend most of our money. I have not looked at the finances until just now. So we have have a quarter million dollars in the bank. That has been very consistent. They're actually making profit over the last month. We're at about 50% of the wage bill. And we've got 24,000 in transfer budget. Uh, I don't know if I don't want to spend any money yet because we are still semi professional. And I believe, hopefully, they will convert us to, to professional status, but I'm not sure if or when that will happen. So, anyway, that's a look at the save. I'm very excited about it. I'm very excited about the club that I've picked. I love picking these small clubs. I've never heard of this club. And I've been, you know, how long have I been playing football manager? Um, I've never heard of this club. So that was interesting. Uh, I was was taking a look at where they were located. So they're down in Dover, I believe it said, uh, which is the southwest part of England uh, over. And I want to say... That's Wales, because, you know, and when I think of Wales, it's it's Charles and Diana, you know, uh, and and I've always seen that area, that southwest portion of, uh, of England as, as Wales. I think that's right. Um, English geography for 200, Alex. <laughs> so uh, anyway, uh, we're going to get into it. Uh, I do have, so I'm recording this about a week before the start of the save. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and put this up as a teaser for you guys so you guys can know what's going on. Give me some feedback here on the questions and the I, you know any ideas you've got. And I look forward to reading those. And then I've got you know about a week before I actually dive in 
and start recording this because I'll, I'll be finishing out the DeGroff Shop save over the next week. So uh, thank you so much. I hope you guys are looking forward to this. Uh, hit that like button again. The more likes on the first video, uh, the more chance of getting it exposed to more people. And uh, love looking at your comments, so please hit me up with those. And please remember, daily football manager content here on the channel, Monday through Saturday. So go ahead and subscribe and hit that notification bell. Looking forward to it. We'll see you. Take care. Bye.